I've got the manager of Team Canada, Bill Hunter. And, Bill, I know you must have been pleased to see one of your Evan and Oilers, Bruce McGregor, snipe that shorthanded goal. It was a wonderful feeling, Al, and it's nice to see all three of our Oilers playing today, and it's another great game. Well, your team has played just remarkably well in the series so far, but the Soviets look sharp today. Yes, I thought that was one of their strongest periods. I think this, that the overall performance of our club has to be gratifying to all Canadians, and we're very proud, of course, in the World Hockey League. You know, the World Hockey Association, uh, I, it seems to me, is gaining just uh, tons of credibility with their showing in this series. I think, uh, Al, this is the major single factor of projecting us squarely into the international hockey picture. It gives us the recognition, the credibility, and, of course, above all, uh, it gives us undue uh, amounts of publicity that is just very wonderful when it all has happened in three short years. Were you concerned at all about Billy Harris making quite a few changes today? No, uh, Billy and I had talked it over along with Pat and Bobby, and we felt this, that this was the game the changes should be made in. Uh, we were on a winning, uh, we got momentum going, and uh, believe me, after a short rest, a uh, short time between games, this was the time to get fresh legs in. Bill, thanks very much, and good luck in the, in the games to come. Thank you, Al. Now let's go back to Don Chevrier. All right, Al, and uh, of course the score is 1-1 after one bristling, exciting period of hockey here at the Winnipeg Arena. McGregor, while Canada was shorthanded, scored the first goal, and the great Yakushev, a couple of minutes later, tied it up for the Soviet Union. He had a penalty shot that was saved for Canada by Don McLeod. And so they're all even now after one period of play, getting set for period two. And let's go up to Johnny Esau and Howie Meeker. Well, the Soviet team is first out onto the ice. And uh, we just have a telegram sent, sent up to us. How old is the Russian goaltender, Petchak? Petchak is 21 years of age. As a matter of fact, uh, Petchak, matter of fact, Petchak was the best goalkeeper in Europe in 1971. He was the best junior in Europe from right through from 69 to 71. And he's been on three world championship teams, 72, 73, 74, and one Olympic champion. Uh, oh, Howie, here's some coming for you. All the citizens of St. John, Newfoundland are rooting for you. Dorothy Wyatt, mayor of St. John. There you are. <laughs> uh, ready to go now with the uh, second period of play. I think probably one of the conversations that took place in that intermission would be that Billy Harris telling his players about throwing that much weight around. This was one of his concerns for Al Hamilton and for Jimmy Harris. Now, he has them both into the game today, and uh, they're replacing players who are not known for going around throwing body checks, and uh, this is not the kind of a series where body checks, particularly in the other end, uh, is the style of play, because that's when you're going to get trapped, and that's how Canada's uh, first goal was given up, set up by a check that was missed, and a man was set home free. So we have uh, one minute and 14 seconds left in the penalty. And it will start off playing a man short, and they're firing it in from long range. Backstrom going into the corner behind the Canadian net with J.C. Tremblay. It's blocked, and they jam it from out in front, and it's put right out of the stick of Backstrom. And Backstrom clears it down the ice. But he tried to get that pass away to Mark Howe, and it wouldn't put, quite hit the target. Back go the Soviets. Now five of them go back inside their own zone to line up to start the power play away, but Stapleton's there to break it up along with Tromblay. This has been a great combination for the Canada, and they clear it down with 40 seconds left to go in the penalty. Mike Walton ready to come out. Here comes Lebedev back at that Canadian line. Takes the shot, pulls it back in. Then Chasman has it too well tied up there. A stick that's lost, so the Soviets have the advantage there again. It's like a kick off the corner by Don McLeod. It's Howe who lost his stick. Howe who lost his stick when sliding in front of the shot. It deflected it down the ice, and then he went right to the player's box. So Bruce McGregor is out there to replace him with Henderson. We have two seconds left in the penalty, and there's a shot that goes off a stick and into the corner. Back out from the line in front, there's this shot that's out of the jam at the score. Left lying wide open in front of the net there was Boris Mahailov, and he simply had to bang the puck after McLeod had stopped it just as the teams had come back to full strength. 
All right, now, watch, watch the Russian standing off the goalpost and the Canadian leave him. There, he's standing off the goalpost. There's no chance at all for McLeod to make the save. Here it comes back again. The pass thrown in front of the net. The Russian get home free. The man on the far side just broke down to the box. And when you do that against this Russian hockey team, you're going to be in trouble. That was Gennady Siginkov, number seven, the big defenseman who fired that puck into the corner, went in after it, threw it out in front, and was passed across the Mihailov, and the Soviets go ahead, and the score is now two to one. Now the teams are back at full strength. Bobby Hall was out there. Rick Smith feeds along. Rick White pass over here to Johnny McKenzie, racing into the corner after it, but it's called for icing. Into the first minute and a half of this second period, the tempo of the game has uh, slowed down considerably. The Russians who seem to be coming on as they did in the first period, and the Canadians uh, with the advantage of the bounce back from a penalty shot that went astray, then took the lead, but it's slowed down since that time. Here goes the play into the corner, and this is uh, Lacroix pumping. Bobby Hall puts it right in front of his own net. Back to Hall at the blue line. As they go off to center right. It's Hall over the line. Racing into the corner. Throws the puck right out of the air. Put it out in front of Johnny McKenzie. Back to the blue line to Paul Smear. It's deflected back out to center. Rick Smith waiting for his mates to get onside. Fires it off the glass and is called offside. <laughs> Signs all over the place here at the Winnipeg Arena. The referee is uh, Victor Dombrowski, the linesman of Jim LeBlanc, Canada, and Sergei Gushin of the Soviet Union. And we have 17 minutes and 55 seconds left in the second period. This is Al Hamilton beating it inside Soviet territory. Back after it was Victor Kuznetsov, who's hit by Webster. Puck goes to Al Hamilton. Hamilton knocks it in, and that'll be offside. Second period really has never started to unwind so far, and we have uh, two and a half minutes gone. That's center ice. Puck bouncing off the boards with Howe, flipping it through, trying to get it back, but it went to Tom Webster, and he couldn't grab it as he tried to reach for it with the gloved hand. Puck in front of the net, back to the blue line to Maltzev, trying to get in closer, and Hamilton slides in front to block that one. Tom Webster. Webster throwing it out to center ice, but it was intercepted. He was trying to send Mark at least Cardiff uh, into the clear. Bad pass by Webster, put it right out of the stick of number 10, Maltzev. Maltzev into the corner. Bumped in there by Hamilton. Still has the puck, however. And around the side of the net goes number 21, Serge Bernier. Bernier, bumped by Bodinov, then by Anison. Cardiff with Bodinov, taken by Anison, puts it in front. Back to the blue line. Here goes Kuznetsov, takes one shot, getting in closer, and that is off the skate. Russians are pouring it on to the Canadians inside that zone. There's a shot that's deflected there by number 24, Al Hamilton. The Soviets have it. Here's Bodinov shooting, and that's deflected by number 10 Howe. And there's really a penalty called here. Dombrowski is calling him very close. And that's Al Hamilton into the penalty box with the score. The Soviets 2 and Canada 1. This is game 3 from Winnipeg. Nice shot. I've made better. Want to play? I came to play Wisconsin Skinny. That's me. You a hustler? Nope, salesman. Break. Salesman, huh? What do you sell? Skittlepool. Skittlepool by Aurora. It's a lot of fun. All right, here's the penalty. It was about the third time that we've committed a foul in this series of plays here. Checking from behind, unless we start running into them, as we have been doing in two games, it's going to be a long, dull, slow afternoon. They pull that little face off back to the blue line into the corner. 
Around the back of that is Lebedev. Lebedev back to the blue line. Ziggenkoff, he shoots and that hits the stick and goes wide, bouncing loose in front of the net. Blows his I guess that he's uh, having touched it over the shoulder, in which case it should come outside over that blue line because it was a Soviet player that touched it. And they're taking it all the way down to the other zone because when you're a man short and you touch it and you touch it over your head in the attacking zone, then the uh, faceoff will come all the way back to the Soviet zone, in this case, the attacking team. Goes for Gregory in for the draw. Loses it to Lebedev. Sigenkov, number seven. Big defense and can skate. He leaves it there for number 15, Yakishev. Yakishev can really fly as he goes to that blue line. Back to Sigenkov. Across the front, there's a shot that's blocked. Up through a maze of legs into the corner to Lebedev. Tied up by Stapleton. Shadrin. Shadrin to the blue line. Shadrin along the board. Goes for Gregory, tries to block him. And he does. He breaks off the center with Sigenkov. Higginkov was too quick for him, and he broke it up. Righty Stapleton for Canada fires it deep into Soviet territory. Soviets leading 2-1 with 1541 remaining in this period. Here's Paul Henderson waiting for one man to drop. He shoots. It's loose in front of the net. And uh, McGregor was too tightly tied up to get the rebound. At the blue line, Mihaila. Mihaila loses it in his own skate, and he's knocked down by Paul Henderson with 51 seconds left in the Canadian penalty. Back over the line goes Yakushev. Yakushev being shattered from behind by Ralph Backstrom. Over the line, it's knocked off the stick, and Stapleton clears but not out. Mihailov has it. And it's loose to the front of the net again, but it's Backstrom finally clearing it. Backstrom around his own net, into the corner. Mihailov has it. And the Soviet set those four men in the corners. One man in front is a shot that's blocked by McLeod and cleared down the ice by J.C. Tremblay. Tremblay, who as it is very clearly that he had a bad year last year. He certainly is not going to have one this year. He came into camp 10 pounds lighter. Here goes uh, number 19, Harlamov. Harlamov puts it in front of the net. And is carried into the boards by Rick Smith. He's being poke checked there by Mihailov. But the uh, referee blows the whistle and we have a face-off in the Canadian zone to the left. We have two seconds left in the penalty to Al Hamilton. Soviets have not taken a penalty so far. Canada has had one penalty shot. Now from the faceoff, it's Paul Smear. Holding to his own line as the Hamilton comes out of the penalty box and Canada's back at full strength. Here we go, racing in there with Lacroix. Lacroix with a Bobby Hull. Bobby Hull shoots. Oh, and a great save by the goalkeeper, Alexander Tretjak. He had Bobby Hull going to that top left-hand corner. Lacroix makes a great pass here to Hull. Just look at this. Hull's in just a little deep, but look how far back the goaltender is. Makes just a good grab. On the face off again, there's Bobby Hull in the backhand shot that stood just off the toe of the stick, and he couldn't really get a bag in the way. There we go. Back up is going to be penalty here. Johnny McKenzie was being tied up. Let's look at this one again. McKenzie and Kuznetsov. I think they're calling doubles on them. What's the score of the Soviets 2 and Canada 1? This is game 3 from Winnipeg. Come on, Larry, let's get the show on the road. We've been all over the place. What kind of affairs are going to be without the O'Keefe caravan? This is their dressing room, office, PA system. Okay, wise guy. You find it. Turn left here. Sorry. Guess we should have turned right. The O'Keefe Caravan will go to any community event, if you'll tell us how to get there. Just give us a call at Sport O'Keefe. Mackenzie and Kuznetsov in for the double minors, or the two minor panels, I should say. The play is now taken by Smear. Smear trying to get set, but he was caught from behind, and the play is cleared down the ice. Here's Rick Smith racing in after it, Maltsev. Get the whack at it, but that puck is bouncing and finally cleared the center. In today, Ziggenkov, number seven, to Harlamov. Harlamov goes back to wind up inside his own zone. Lacroix shadowing him, bumps him, but can't knock him off the puck. Oh, chasing him down the right board. They 
Hull has the puck as he comes up to his own line. The pass on the right side going to cross. There's Bobby Hull going it over that line. He's not going to get a chance to make the play to Hull because he's too well covered. Here's the backhand shot. He hits the goalkeeper's pad and then bounced off the post as Paul Smear was open. Smear around the back of the net trying not to shake himself. The cross to Harlemar. He clears it up to Moltsev. Moltsev is back, but he's all alone. Now they set the man up in front of the net. There's a shot that's loose. As the goalkeeper's on the cross, with the rebound right out in front. Back comes Ralph Baxter. Vasilia. And he gets by him. Vasilia bumps him in the second time. And the puck goes flying back out to J.C. Trombley. Trombley in over the blue line. Got to pull the puck back to Trombley. To, uh, the bang. Oh, a great save by the goalkeeper, Kutchak. As Ralph Baxter's got a crack at it. Trombley did a great job of getting the puck back out for Baxter. Yakushev, that's the line with one man back. Yakushev turning, and the shot goes astray. As it's taken now by Ralph Baxter, he tears down the left wing. He's got Walt the center. Walt took the pass, but it was on the backhand side, and he couldn't control it with that third stick. Gabriel back of his own goal, Paul 22 remaining in the second period. We have eight seconds left in those penalties. Little one for the Soviets as they come up. Chadrin, Chadrin back over to Yakushev. Yakushev works his way to the side of the Canadian net and is taken by the Soviets. Back to the blue line, Vasiliev. And that hits the leg. There's another shot that just goes sliding by as Yakushev had it. J.C. Trombley moves it to Yakushev. Yakushev is bumped. And the Soviets get right the side of the Canadian goal. Johnny McKenzie running at him and missing. Here comes Petrov coming up. There's a shot kicked out there by the goalkeeper of the crowd, and there's going to be a penalty called here. Here's, here's Green Triangle. Watch Bobby Hull create the opening here. The craw hangs on, but look at Spear move into the opening. A good deep here. Right in through the middle. At one point, he had Bobby Hull wide open, but he chose to shoot the puck. Trecek made the big save. Nobody has gone to the penalty boxes yet. The door is still open. It looks like it was uh, number 19, Vladimir Shadrin, the five-time world champion. Well, nobody's made any move to go to the penalty box. Chadrian has gone to the Russian players' box, number 19. He finally comes out. Now, he had gone to get a new stick. And uh, he's a 25-year-old, 180-pounder, who is a good hockey player, good rangey center. He scored uh, eight points against Canada in 72. Now, let's see. The Soviets, you know, oftentimes the Soviets are just as dangerous when they're a man short as when they're at full strength. At least the world championship play they have been. Change of players with Sigenkov, number seven, going onto the ice, and Vasiliev, number six, coming off. Now we're set to go, and Canada has the power play advantage for the first time. Bobby Hall is out there with Paul Smear on the defense, Serge Bernier, Mark Tardif, and Tom Webb to the forward line. Here we go with uh, Bernier at center. Over to Bobby Hall, working his way into center. This pass is right out of front. He shoots it. Fred Jack. Goes down to make us a good save. Saved by Petrak. Bernier makes it a, a great pass to Hull. Now watch Hull cut through the middle. Bernier somehow stays on side, takes it to his backhand, and Petrak's there again with the left leg. Face off inside the Soviet zone. The draw goes back into the corner to Sigenkov, and he just simply holds it there for another whistle. Don McLeod in uh, his professional career played 105 games. Three. Canadians inside that zone are unable to hold it in as Paul Smear comes back for with Bobby Hull. Now he's turning, waiting to get organized as Petrov is doing the forechecking, number 17, 16, with Mihailov, number 20, uh, 13, on the left side. Here we go with Tardif. Tardif looking. Can't slide it through. Uh, Sigenkov pins it against the boards and takes a bump from Smear along the route. and 12 seconds remaining in the uh, first Soviet penalty. The Soviets continue to lead 2-1. to one. The scoring came with McGregor from Henderson at 13.25 of the 
uh, opening period. And then Yakishev and Chadrin make it 1 1. And then in this uh, second period, Mihailov from Petten 23 mark, and thus the 2 1 lead. Ray Harris, the gentleman who coach. To get the rest of the players to challenge them by order. Here's the play back to Bobby Hall. Across to Casey Trombley. Shoots. Blocked in front of the net. They bang at it as it goes wide of the goal. The Soviets come out with it. Led up here by number 16, Petra. Over to Mahila. Two on two. Back to Petra. Right out in front. And it comes off the stick of Mahila. Bobby Hall gives him a wrap. He goes down. J.C. Trombley comes up with it. Trombley. As Hall gets up and races down the left wing with Jimmy Harrison. Harrison, number 15. Dick Handling tries to slide through, but he can't get by the silly. He hasn't too well tied up. They uh, have it pulled against the boards, and it finally goes up into the crowd as Paul Henderson took a whack at it. Yes. <laughs> Happy young man who has... Uh, Souvenir of game three in the 1974 summit meeting. It'll be Jimmy Harris, number 15 of the Edmonton Oilers, against number 11, Lebedev from Soviet for the faceoff. They bang it off the board. Henderson back to the point to Bobby Hall. Hall on front. Here they're getting set. Here's a shot by Gregor Shoot. They bang at it and Dredd Makes another sensational save. Hand come out again. That Trichik is something else. Here she comes over into the middle. McGregor will move in here now. Look at that left hand. Screen and everything else. We have uh, 25 seconds left in Shadreen's penalty, and Canada has actually had two good scoring chances. Not clean cut, wide open scoring chances, as they really are in power plays, but two good chances. And have failed to capitalize. They trail two to one. Harlamov loses that uh, face off. It's taken there by Jimmy Harrison. Harrison racing around the net with Paul Henderson. Henderson fakes once. Back out in front to Bobby Hull. He shoots. And blocked out in front. And here comes the racing back. It's Yakishev with J.C. Trombley steering him into the corner. Then he bumps Shadrin. Shadrin and Yakishev. Yakishev is big enough, however, who takes the check. Six remaining in the second period. Two seconds left in the penalty to the Soviets. And there's big Alexander Yakushev who pulled the groin muscle in the first game. And the way he comes back to the bench, you swear he's hurting so much, he'd never go back on the ice. But that's just his, uh, just his move. Rick Smith, number 17 for Canada. Up to his own blue line. The teams are at full strength. It's Ralph Backstrom. Try to flip it through, and going in after it will be Walton. And Walton's offside. Backstrom tried to flip that little breakaway pass from outside the blue line to Walton, but by the time he got over the red line, he was unable to reach it. Now it's Spear riding Barton off out of the play. The puck comes out to center ice. Coming back for it is number three, Luchenko. He's Vladimir Luchenko, and he puts it up to the blue line. Taken here by Maltsev. Maltsev, he drags it behind him and tries to kick it through the defense, but was unsuccessful. Luchenko to Anisin. Anisin turning at his own line. Has it taken away and right back onto his own stick. Smear goes down and pulls the puck back. Oh, it's Victor Kuznetsov. Kuznetsov, number 12. A late addition to the team this year. Goes back off to an Eason. That is up in midair. He knocked it down, however. And then Howe takes a run at him. Here's uh, Ralph Baxter stealing the puck, and he shoots. And that was deflected wide of the net. Around the boards to Badenov, number 24 over there on the left wing. With an Eason at center. Look for the drop pass. He takes it. It's shot in front, and it's cleared. Bouncing puck is kicked off to the line and out to center ice by Rick Smith. And all the way down, there'll be no icing called on this one. The teams are at full strength, and Canada is changing on the fly. Back come the Soviet Union with Mihailov. Shot right along the ice. is blocked easily by a goaltender, John McLeod. McLeod 
Ford signed a uh, contract with uh, the Vancouver Blazers for the coming year. So it would appear that Vancouver's goaltending problems are resolved. Petrov and Bernier will go in for the faceoff. Uh, Soviets get the draw back to Vasiliev, and the shot is caught. Down the crowd, and he simply dropped it and shot it away, but the whistle had already blown, so that the referee, Victor Dombrowski, was very quick with it. And it is Petrov and Bernier again. Bernier from the Quebec Nordique with Mark Cardiff, number 22, on his left wing, and Tom Webster on the right side. 8.09 remaining in the second period. The Soviets leading 2-1 to one in game three. Back of the net goes number 10, Howe. Fires it off the boards, but it doesn't go anywhere. The Soviets clear. They get it, try to jam it from the short side. Maltsev is knocked down with a puck in underneath him. As uh, Marty Howe, number 10, the young 20-year-old defenseman, couldn't see the puck and wasn't going to take any chances, so he just flattened the nearest player nearer to him. Billy Harris says that Jordy Howe will definitely be ready for the game on Monday night uh, in Vancouver. First, Bernier has trouble with that puck. Finally, he takes it to the corner. Around the back of the net. Oh, put it right out in front. Here comes uh, Tom Webster with Cardiff. But he couldn't get that pass over to him. Powell goes up to the line. Intercepted and brought back out again. The Russians are roaring back. Here we come with the Harlemov. Harlemov shoots. And that's high. That drive. Tied up and shot. Picked off now by Bernier. Bernier up with Mark Cardiff. It's two on two. At the Soviet blue line, a drop pass, racing in. It's Webster, he shoots the score! Tom Webster! What a beautiful fake! He looked like he was going to let the slaps out of all time go, but he faked and took it in. Now, watch Team Canada break away here, and this is a great, great, great drop pass. Look at this. Now, look at the feint. Great kick comes out. Pulls it around and puts him in. Webster was just a great goal. Here it is again. The drop pass puts him two on one. Watch it. Makes the fake. Trichik comes out and hey, maybe this will spark it. That's all we need is a little bit of spark. Come on. Now well, that's that's a good uh, birthday present for himself as he goes. He becomes 26 next week and it's now a 2-2 hockey game. All Hawkeye. From New England, Tom Webster makes it a 2-2 hockey game. Here we come again with Johnny McKenzie. McKenzie going into the corner. Puts it back out in front. Here is Stapleton. Stapleton shooting. That's why. McKenzie shoots loose in front of the goal. And it's cleared as Lebedev comes back for the Soviets. Seven minutes remaining in the period. A drop pass to Chadrin and it's high and up into the crowd. That Webster jumped a mile high after he scored that goal. And like I said earlier, Harry, it doesn't matter how long these players have been in for hockey, when they score one in these the international games, they just fly up in the air, and then they go racing for the puck and take it as a souvenir. That's one you'll remember a long time, John. It's just a fantastic play. On the faceoff, it's Lebedev. Lebedev, a uh, long pass that goes off the board. Don McLeod stops it. And it's J.C. Tremblay. Putting it ahead on the wing for Johnny McKenzie. McKenzie let it roll off the heel of his stick. He was looking for Hull and trying to pass at the same time. Here's Jackson goes in. And the shot is blocked and knocked right by the goalpost as David tried to clear. Now we have uh, Johnny McKenzie. And there'll be, there probably will be double fouled here as Johnny McKenzie and Lebedev raise their sticks at each other and start. Peacemaker, along with the two linesmen, and uh, what they're really careful over here is that they don't make two minutes into five minutes. McKenzie and Yakushev went at each other pretty good over in the far side. This is where it's all started. Now watch here. There was an offside. Now if the offside whistle had been blown loud enough, this wouldn't have happened. There are the two fellas trying to comb each other, and I've seen a few instances where there could be a little vicious hockey. Well, we have six minutes and 36 seconds left to go in the second period. It's a 2-2 hockey game as Tom Webster just tied it up for Canada. 
Now Coach Billy Harris will send out Andre Lacroix with Bobby Hull on the forward line, J.C. Trombley and Pat Stapleton on the defense. Harlamov, Sigintov, Lyapkin, and Yakushev back out there for the Soviets. This is Sigintov, who spun around by Hull, and Hull has spun around himself. Here it's inside the Canadian zone, Yakushev fighting for it, along with J.C. Trombley, and Hull goes in to take it. Bobby Hull in front of his own net. Back over to Trombley. Trombley. Ready for Hull to cross in front of him. Now he goes to the line. He's putting it back out in front of Bobby Hull. He shoots. Oh, great save in the back of the glove by the goalkeeper. Trecek. Another shot by Stapleton. That's why. Around here to J.C. Trombley. Trombley trying to work it to the corner to Lacroix. He shoots and that hits the skate and goes way up into the crowd. That Landry Lacroix who's just been... Almost, he with Harmelov have been uh, bit, having a bit of a shoving duel. But you know, in each of the games played so far, Harlamov could have Watch almost out. been the star of the game. Watch how Bobby Holt gets open on that play. He certainly, Harmelov was right with him all the way, and then Bobby went to the big skate, and J.C. hung on to the puck, and Bobby lost his check and then cut in through the middle for that great shot. Backstrom gets the draw, back to Walton. Walton to the point, the shot in front, didn't get through. Back comes Mihailov, but there's a uh, whistle for having knocked the puck forward with the hand, and the faceoff will come inside the Soviet zone to the left. I mentioned they called Tom Webster Hawkeye. That's because he wears thick glasses, and in the game he wears contact lenses. Backstrom and Petrov, he gets the draw. Back to Walton, back to the blue line, keeping it inside the Soviet zone. Taken by Gusev, he loses it back out of front, they shoot! Truck check down, he made the save on Walton. Keeping it inside the Soviet zone, Walton going over to try to make the check, it's fouled to Mihailov at center, two on two. At the Canadian line, the pass over there to Petrov, it's loose right in front of the goal, as McLeod lost control of that. That is Backstrom, very quickly into the corner. Backstrom, one of the headiest hockey players anywhere. Went over and covered it up quickly to make sure that uh, his team could get reorganized. And the best way to do that would be with a whistle. 46 seconds remaining in the penalties. It's a 2-2 hockey game. It goes back of the net. Paul Schmier can't get it. It's taken in the corner again by Schmier as it comes off the stick. Schmier fighting with Mihailov. Grabs hold of him in one hand. But the puck comes now out there to Rick Smith. Smith with Ralph Baxter. Walton on the left wing. Going into the line. Drop pass for Walton. Walton goes to the corner. And he has the puck pulled off the stick. Back out in front. And Petrov is there to intercept. 4.57 remaining in the second period. A 2-2 hockey game. Back comes the Stiliev. The Stiliev and his off wing. Back to the blue line. Here's the shot by Mahala. The shoot. Oh, and a great goal by the Soviets as they fire it in. As a beautiful setup from the right side of the goal. And the Soviets go on top 3-2. Well, here they play that tic-tac ho hockey that they're just so famous for. Schmier stops. Now look at the puck come back. Now watch way over. Backstrom come into the middle, and there's no way you can leave your check open like that. McLeod just had no chance. Just a great three-way passing play, forcing the Canadian players to come out of position. Well, the Soviets go ahead for the second time in the game. It is 3-2, 4-46. Remaining in this period with nine seconds left in those penalties. Now it's Victor Kuznetsov. At center ice with Maltsev. Back over to Anison. Anison at the Canadian line. Takes the shot. The pass scores! Right from the faceoff circle. Don McLeod wasn't even ready for it. A beautiful goal by Alexander Maltsev, who let a burning shot go. Just about a foot and a half up off the ice. Just watch the quickness in which he gets his shot away. Look at him now. Watch him. Screen shot. Faked it. There's the pass. And let her go. Second it's on his stick. McLeod back in the net. Perhaps should have been a little bit out. But that was just quite a shot. Right off the post. Right along the end. Well, it's a 4-2 to two hockey game now. The Soviets are leading. And we have 4-29 remaining in the period. right back again. His shot was high and off to the corner. It's Maltsev being bumped in there by Harrison. Then he's hit by Howe. 
And they'll have a face-off inside the Canadian zone to the left. Marty Howe, number 11 out there on defense. Number 24, Al Hamilton. And the puck is into the corner. The teams are at full strength. The shot is right on goal as McLeod turns it around. Into the corner. Howe gives him a bump. Puck comes right out in front. It comes right back onto the stick of Bodnov. Bodnov is being tied up by Henderson. Howe bumps him. And they go to the corner with Maltsev. It's loose. And it's cleared finally by Al Hamilton. Right behind the goal. He's being pushed by number 24, Bodnov. Takes a long pass. Then he puts it onto the stick of Al Hamilton at center right. Back to the Soviet zone. It's Kuznetsov. Kuznetsov at center. It's intercepted now by Jim Harrison with Bruce McGregor. McGregor drops the pass. Looking for Harrison to get set in front of that net. Puts it right out in front. And the shot was no good. Back comes the Soviets. That's that right. Led by Shadrin. Shadrin's drop pass for Yebele Lebedev. Lebedev dropped one for Yakichev. Back to Lebedev. And that hit a stick and went to the back of the goal. And they get a whistle on the play. And working right down there by the Soviet bench. Uh, Nikolai Ozorov. As you see him just leaning over the boards with a microphone. Of course, there's one thing about working by your own team bench all the time. If your coach wants to go over and see a replay, see what you're doing wrong, well, I guess maybe you can do it. Whitey Stapleton behind the Canadian goal. The pass. Over for Tom Webster. Webster dumps a high one out to center ice. It's picked off by the Soviets. Here come the Soviets, led by Yakushev with Lebedev. Lebedev stand on the shot, and then it goes over on the far side. Lebedev down to one leg to Yakushev. Yakushev gets the second shot. And he is being left wide open in front of that net, and they're going to get caught more than this. They leave them open like that. Whitey Stapleton clears it to J.C. Trombley. Trombley looking for that weak wide pass over here to Mark Tarter, but it's called outside. Turn, they can turn things around two years ago in this game, in this rink. Canada was leading by two and blew it and wound up with a 4-4 tie. Let's start, let's start to play that famous tic-tac-toe passing game of theirs, Johnny. Just a moment ago, they made three consecutive drop passes and Yakushev moved in for a great shot. But Yakushev, I think, is their leader. He's just so tremendously strong out there this afternoon and that Hermanov is flying. Yakushev Six foot one, he goes 183, 184 pounds. Now this is Paul Smear for Canada, being turned around and sighted in front of his own goal. The Soviets almost picked that pass out of the air. Vasiliev at center right. Taken by Smear, Smear loses it. Taken by Petrov at center. And the Soviets are just staying wide across the ice, throwing it back and forth and coming off a lot of time, keeping the Canadians disorganized. Johnny McKenzie fires it in, and Bobby Hall goes into the corner after it. Around the boards, cleared out to Petrov. Petrov feeds that breakaway pass down that left side to Mahala, but he's cut by Paul Smear from behind. Out in front, Rick Smith. Smith over to Bobby Hall. Bobby Hall on the right side to McKenzie with lacrosse. In front of the net, he shoots. Oh, and the great save by the goalkeeper, Kutchak, on Andre Lacroix. Petrov back at the Canadian blue line. They got a man in front of the net, but Johnny McKenzie has him tied up. On the board is Bobby Hall. Cutting at the blue line. Getting set. Goes around the defenseman, Vasilia. Puts it right out in front. And it's brought up to the blue line and cleared right out to center. Here is the race board with Petrov and Yakushev, two men back. It's Polk check the center ice. Here we go with Andre Lacroix and Bobby Hall, two men back. Going in over the line, he fakes, drops the shot to Johnny McKenzie. To Bobby Hall, Hall cuts back into the corner. He's trying to set it up in front. It's Andre Lacroix who has it. Back to Bobby Hall, and Hall is knocked off the ball. All the way down the ice. But he'll call it back for icing with a minute and four seconds remaining in the second period. And it's a 4-2 hockey game with the Soviets on top. Yakushev is still the scoring leader with two goals and two assists for the Soviets. Well, the Hull and McCraw each have five points for Canada. Here's a shot, though. Oh, a shot from point range by Mike Walton. Just off the target. Walton 
Can't get control of it. And Yakushev comes roaring back with that big, long stride. Fakes the drop pass. Goes into the corner with it. And then he does drop it. It's over there to Al Hamilton who loses it. At the side of the net. They jam it out in front. Back to the blue line of Sigenkov. Sigenkov shoots. And then hits the leg as the goalkeeper was completely blocked. Now we have Chadron back at the goal. Here has lost his stick. It bounces up wide of the goal post again. Back to the blue line as the Russians are banging it back and forth. And finally it's clear to the line and just out to Walton. Walton across to Howe. Mark Howe back over the right side to Walton. Walton trying to work his way in. Here it is to Howe. Howe's pass across the front of the net. And back out in front right up to Walton. He shoots. And the rebound is blocked out there by the goalkeeper, Trekjad. Let's play with Mark Howe, Walton, and Baxter as they set that three-way combination all the way in. And Trecek again. Watch, look at Walt right in the slot. He's been living in the slot for the last three games, and Trecek comes out. Here it is again, right in through the middle. Coming in late, nice pass to Howe. Howe should have been shooting there. We're lucky to get it back out in front. Back out in front. Good shot, good save. Five seconds left to go in the second period with the Soviets leading four to two. It was a 1-1 hockey game at the end of the first period. McGregor and Yakushev splitting goals. Then the high at the 123 mark of this period, followed by Webster, who tied it up at 2-2, then Vasiliev and Maltsev to give the Soviets the four to two lead. Even with only five seconds left to go in the penalty, Barry Harris makes sure he wants the right combination out there because he'd like to get one shot off at his face off. And he sends Bobby Hull out there. Hull will be just outside the face off circle with Jimmy Harrison, who's good on the draw. They'll try to pull it back to him to get the shot away. Maltsev, number 10, is ready and waiting. Harrison is not ready to move in. And then you'll see just there in the radio screen is Bobby Hull. And try to pull it back there. They do. He shoots. Oh, this one by the post. The strategy was perfect. The shot was just off the mark. Now Hamilton bumping into the Soviet player as the buzzer sounds to end the second period of play with the Soviets on top by a pair. They came roaring back, giving indication in the first period they'd be tougher in the second, and they were. With the score of the Soviets four and Canada two, this is game three from Winnipeg.